most of us have heard the old proverb which states that as a man thinketh, so is he. And most of us accept the spirit of the idea that a man's character, disposition, activities, and general personality are dependent largely upon the general character of his thoughts. This being so, and it also being true that a man is able to control the general character of his thoughts, it logically follows that every awakened ego is the creator of the character and personality of the individual whose self it is. Philosophers teach us that there is a law of a polarity manifesting in everything. That is to say that in everything there is found the presence of the two poles, the positive and the negative. We find this law manifest in the mentality and character of every individual. There is always to be found the positive elements of mentality and character and the negative elements thereof. There is always to be found the two-sidedness in individuals. Every individual finds within himself a constant struggle between these two opposite elements, the positive and the negative. Upon the decision of this battle depends largely of the advancement, the success, welfare, and progress of the individual. God has well said, In my breast, alas, two souls duel. All there is unrest. Each with the other strives for mastery. Each from the other struggles to be free. The ordinary individual seems to be content to remain as passive spectator of this struggle, but the individual of the awakened ego takes a part in the struggle, and by throwing the weight of his free will into the balance, he brings down the scales on the positive side. But you may ask, just what are the positive qualities? How may we know them when we consider them? This is a very nature, natural, and a very proper question. As we proceed, you will discover the infallible touchstone or test whereby you may settle the matter for yourself. In most cases, you will have no trouble in making the decision by the employment of your ordinary powers of judgment. For instance, you find no trouble in deciding that courage is positive, and cowardice is negative, that truth is positive, and untruth negative, that energy is positive, and slothfulness is negative, that persistence is positive, and lack of it negative. But when you come to consider less familiar cases, you feel more or less uncertain, and instinctively you look around for a touchstone or a test whereby you decide infallibility. A well-known writer, in considering this instinctive demand, has said, When the individual is forced to consider any feeling, emotion, idea, action, advice, suggestion, or teaching, he should always submit it to the touchstone of positivity by asking himself, Will this make me stronger, more powerful, more capable, more efficient, better. And the degree that the thing corresponds to these qualifications, so is its degree of positivity. It becomes the duty of every individual wishing to progress on the path of life and desiring to become proficient and capable in his expression and manifestation of mentality and character to cultivate the positive qualities of the mind and to restrain and inhi inhibit the negative ones. In the consideration of this matter, you should always remember that every positive quality has its negative opposite. 
This is an invariability rule. This is an invariable rule, and one that you may test for yourself. And arising from it is this important rule of the new psychology to develop a positive quality. You should restrain or inhibit its opposing negative. To restrain or inhibit a negative quality, you should develop and encourage its opposing positive. The rule is worthy of being carved over the door of every institution of learning in the world. For its general observance would create a new race of men and women and a new civilization of positive, capable, and efficient people. The positive qualities may be encouraged and developed by the mastery and control over the mental field exercised by the awakened ego, and the negative qualities may be inhibited and restrained by the exercise of the same power within each individual. The ego should always assert its positivity to the feelings, emotions, desires, and other mental states. The will should be held firmly in its place as positive to the desires. The intellect should be held positive to the emotions, desires, and feelings. The ego, through the will, should maintain a positive attitude toward and control over the attention and the imagination. True assertion of the ego does not mean the petty quality called egotism, but rather the higher phase of egoism or mastery of the ego. You are asked here to consider the following quotation from a well-known writer on the subject of the new psychology who says, Man should be more than a mere creature of chance, environment, and outside influences. He should be ruled from within, be self-ruled by the power of the ego, instead of being merely a weak instrument of desire, emotion, and feeling, influenced by suggestions and impressions from every passing person or thing. Man should be directed and guided by the strong instrument of his will, held firmly to its task by the ego, with full power of regulation, decision, and determination, and with the full will enforcing those powers, man should be very giant of endeavor and attainment instead of the petty, crawling, weakling that so many of his kind are now. Man has it in his power to make himself what he will, to become his own mental creator instead of allowing others to create his mentality for him. Too long has man bowed to environment and outer circumstances. He is now learning to be his own environment by means of creating the same from within. The fundamental ideal of the new psychology is embodied in the symbol of the charioteer driving his fiery steeds under full control and with taunt rein. The chariot represents the being of the man, the charioteer, the ego, the reins, the will, the steeds, the mental states of feeling, emotion, desire, imagination, and the rest. Unless the reins be strong, they will not be sufficient to control the horses. Unless the character be trained and vigilant, the horses will run away with the chariot and dash to pieces the driver in the general wreck. But controlled and mastered, the fiery steeds will lead forward to attainment and accomplishment and at the same time will travel the road in safety. Each of you is the charioteer, driving the fiery steeds with the reins of the will. 
how are you driving? Are you mastering the steeds or are they mastering you? It is your power to curb, control, urge on, and direct these splendid mental creatures so that you may travel far into the regions of attainment and accomplishment. Or it is within your powers to allow them to wander from side to side of the road and into the swamps and the morasses on the side. Or it is within your power to give them their heads and to allow them to rush away with you to destruction. Have you decided which of the three courses you shall follow? Have you decided whether you shall be the master or the mastered? There comes a time in the life of each one of us when this question must be answered, the course chosen. It may be that this time has come to you in the reading of these lines. Are you ready to answer it and to make the decision? Remember the question. It is this, mastery or servitude, which... Character building depends upon the mental attitude and mental states of the individual. The man of positive thoughts and feelings will develop into the positive character, while he is of negative thoughts and feelings will develop into the weakling, negative character. We usually lay great stress upon the axiom, as a man thinketh, so is he, ignoring the correlated truth that as a man feeleth, so is he. But at, the, at last, <laughs> when we see that a man's feelings are largely under his control and are really the outcome of his thoughts and the direction of his attention, the truth of the first axion becomes doubly apparent. Character building depends greatly upon the feeling side of his mental nature. Pure abstract thinking may serve to prevent negative feelings but other than this, it has little or no positive value in the character building. But when the man is thinking about anything in which his interests, his feelings, his emotions, his desires, or his passions are involved, then we find that he is building character for good or evil. Hence the importance of the man's interests being directed toward positive things rather than to negative ones. The formation of the positive ideals has much to do with the building of a positive character. A man grows to resemble his ideas, and as a man's ideas are, out, are, are the outgrowth of his feelings and emotions. The idea hold by the man arouses interest in all things connected with it. Interest is the strong motive of attention, and attention is the beginning of all the activities of the will. So the man's ideas serve to set it into activity, the chain of mental cause and effect that results in storing away in his mind the strong impressions that have so much to do with the building up of character. By the constant use of these impressions, he builds up the mental path of habit over which the will so likes to travel. And the more frequently he uses these mental paths, the more does his character become set. So we find over the fresh il illustrations of the statement that a man tends to grow to resemble the things he likes and in which he is interested. So true is this that a writer has suggested that we say, as a man loveth, so is he. But here again, the mastermind assorts its power and says, I love that which I want to love. I am free here as in all else in my realm. But though this last be so, a man's likes and his ideals are important pieces of the machinery by which he builds up his character. Modern psychology teaches us that the two following principles are operative in the character of each individual. That feelings manifest themselves in will, action, unless inhibited or controlled. And that the will action follows the lines of the strongest interest. These twin principles of mental action should be considered together. The first of the above named principles, the principle that feelings manifest themselves in action unless inhibited or controlled, 
is recognized as a fact by all leading psychologists of today. William James has said concerning it, all consciousness is motor. We might say that every possible feelings produce a movement and that the movement is a movement of the entire organism and that of each and all of its parts. If we fancy some strong emotion, then try to abstract from our consciousness of it all the feelings of its bodily symptoms. We find that we have nothing left behind. There is always the tendency toward outward expressions and manifestations of all feelings, emotions, desires, and passions, which tendency proceeds into action unless controlled or inhibited. These being perceived, it is seen that our actions, and consequently our character, tend to fall into the pattern or mold created by those of our feelings and desires which are permitted to survive and remain uncontrolled. We constantly act, often unconsciously, in accordance with our strongest desires, feelings, likes, or dislikes, prejudices, etc., all of which are but phases of feeling. Our physical lives are regulated by our mental states, and our mental states are largely what we make them, providing that we have learned the art and science of mental mastery. The materials of our feelings are taken from the subconscious mental storehouse, and what comes out of that plane of our mentality must have previously gone into it. The mastermind recognizes this and places it, that storehouse, only what he chooses to go into it and what he chooses to come out of it as the incentive to action, being always governed in his choice by the rule of positivity. Heretofore announced, will this make me stronger, more powerful, more capable? more efficient, better. Why a subconscious storehouse with positive material, only positive material, will be issued from to form the base of actions. The second of the above named principles, the principle that will of action follows the lines of the strongest interest is likewise recognized as correct by the best authorities. The majority of persons follow the line of least resistance and allow their interests to become attracted and held by many things which have no positive value to the individual and in which too often has decidedly negative character. The few who have experienced the consciousness of the awakened ego and who have at least begun to assert the master mind act intelligently in this matter and refuse to place the interest upon any negative thing or anything lacking value.
In the following pages of this book, the reader has to consider each particular set of mental faculties and each particular phase of mental activity and expression. The special machinery of each set or phase thereof will be analyzed and the part played by it in the mental life of the individual. At the same time, the reader will be instructed in the most approved methods whereby each of these set of faculties or phases of mentality may be brought and held under the control of the ego by the use of the will and those be brought into the category of the positive We are told that a man's character is entirely molded by circumstances. We lose sight of the spirit that the great master of mind who exclaimed, Circumstances? I make circumstances. Able to direct, control, from a popular writer on the subject of mind power. This writer once said to his students, concluding a series of lessons to them, if you are an independent rising your birthright of strength, your heritage of power, then by all means remain as you are and go on your own way. Leave these teachings for right of power for the mess of cottage of negative content and sheep like passivity, but who are boldly claiming their own and demanding their rightful portion. These strong brothers of yours, the individuals who are the coming inheritors of the earth, I send to you who are now reading these words, all the energy, force, reaching into your heart of desire, it may fill you with the very spirit of individuality, conscious egohood, perception of reality, and realization of the ego, so that henceforth your battle cry